56 million for the levelling up fund, right. over 200 million for All our right. roads, 30 million pounds for our buses. <laughs> that yeah. clear choice versus Sir Flip Flop, who has today been found out having a costed plan from 116 billion for some green agenda that no one really understands, mm. ditching the 28 billion pound pledge, ditching his 10 pledges as Labour All leader, right. ditching you Jeremy really Corbyn as his mate. All right. This yeah. is the reality yeah. of it. Been well promoted there, I think. I don't want you just to repeat what Boris Johnson said. I want you, in your words, to tell me why he has not lost moral authority. Because the Prime Minister has accepted full responsibility. He's made the changes that he was asked to. What are they? Describe those Gray. to me. The changes were obviously looking at the type of staff that were inside the building, looking at accountability himself, structures, he was the staff looking at accountability, the building, wasn't he? looking at accountability structures within the building. Not and Sue Gray has actually welcomed in her report those changes that were made, and I think that's a really positive step forward to hear that the changes in 10 Downing Street that were needed are taking place. But no accountability to himself. He has taken accountability. He's accepted responsibility. He's apologised profusely but and no, humbly, but and for he's him, paid no a fine cons that he was no issued. No consequence other than that one fine. No consequence. No political consequence. Well, I'm not quite sure what you're looking for, Sheila. Do you, uh, what, you what is are. it you want? I want him to resign. The quality and diversity of candidates is something that Labour could only ever <laughs> dream of. And I tell you, and I tell you now that anyone who wins this contest is going to smash Labour the next general election. And I will proudly get behind them and make sure we deliver on our manifesto and then tell the people why they should continue to trust us. Because despite the attempts to say that you could be trusted on Brexit, no one's buying it. Clark OK, but you know, for me, watching these leadership contenders, um, you know, moving away from the very limited net zero targets, which incidentally, uh, the High Court yesterday said that they are failing on. We'll and talk you, about you, that you, in a moment. Which we'll come on to. I mean, for me, frankly, it's like soiling your pants and deciding that you're going to change your shirt. It doesn't make an absolute difference. Uh, it's not dealing with the actual issue, which is the Conservative Party in 13 years of failure. We will motivate their voters and they have to see delivery on the All ground. Right. If we don't deliver, I've always accepted well, that we'll face the consequences. You're running out of time. You're so much like that violin player on the Titanic as it sinks. Right. I, I, mean, I, mean, I, was I, was, I was distracted by the actions yeah, as well. Oh, May I proudly put on the record my register of interest as a former teacher and a former trade union member and representative yeah. for the NAS UWT. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, I am very worried about seeing teachers going on strike because it's the pupils that will suffer the most, particularly disadvantaged pupils from areas like Stoke-on-Trent North, Kidsgrove and Talk. And whilst I am a huge admirer of the incredible work teachers do, they are sadly being cajoled by barren bosses in unions like the Not Education Union, led by Bolshevik Balsen and Commie Courtney, with their Labour mates to force teachers out of the classroom and make sure that kids continue to suffer. What can we do to make sure pupils will not be victims any further? OK, you're entitled to your opinion, but I, other I know, people but have I a different you. opinion. Of course they, other people many, have a different opinion. People, of course they do. Many people have a different opinion. And at the opinion, next and general election, I'm asking at the next you, general election, people have the opportunity to decide you, if they want the Prime Minister they, to continue as the Prime Minister. They absolutely will. I am asking you, in your own words, to say why he hasn't lost moral authority. And you just keep saying what he has said and what Sue Gray has said. I'm asking you to talk about moral authority. And strangely, you cannot. I can. I'm telling you, you don't like the answer that I'm giving you. That's not my problem, that's yours. It's not that I don't like the answer that I'm giving you. The answer you're giving me is not an answer to the question of whether he's lost moral authority. That's your interpretation, that's not mine. So what now for the Prime Minister? The Prime Minister needs to focus on the big issues of the day, which is about cost of living, rising inflation, and Should I think in the coming days ahead we're going to hear what more this government's going to do to add on to the £22 billion worth of support we've already given. Should he appear before the Privileges Committee in person and take any questions put to him? That's something for the Privileges Committee to decide. If they invite him, they're likely to, should he appear? I'd be surprised if he didn't. The government has invested £56 million from the Levelling Up Fund, £31.7 million to bus back better, 500 brand new home office jobs, a £17.6 million Kidsgrove town deal that's unlocked the refurbishment of a sports centre they closed in 2017 because they couldn't be bothered to spend a single pound coin. Whereas in Labour's legacy is a PFI hospital with 200 fewer beds than the old one, stealing £20 million a year from the doctors and nurses on the front line, PFI schools stealing money from teachers in the classroom, and the White Elephant Council office that wasted £40 million. Why are Labour ever going to come back to so Trade? Because I can't see it. I have to say to the honourable gentleman that that was a fantastic audition for the Secretary of State's job. But I can't imagine, based on that performance, that he'll be around long enough 
to keep his own. Let me tell him why. I was in Stoke-on-Trent the other day meeting some incredible young people at the YMCA, an amazing organisation where those young people had a lot to say about the record of this government and it sounded very different to his. Let me give him the reality of what has happened in Stoke-on-Trent. For those, for the, taking into account every single penny of levelling up money that has been allocated to Stoke-on-Trent, his constituents are £27.7 million pounds worse off yep. as a consequence well, of this reality. government. Even that the is the Tory win. premium. That is the premium the winners, that you pay for having a Tory government. Yep. And if you have any inch of conscience about the plight of some of those young people that I met, he will be standing up and challenging this government on their record of not delivering for Stoke-on-Trent. He should be apologising to the doctors and nurses who can't get to hospital, the patients who can't get their operation, the kids who miss out on their education today, but also those Armed Forces veterans who risk their lives for our freedoms who won't be able to celebrate Armed Forces Day on Saturday. Do you want to apologise for all that, Mick? Well, I think Jonathan should apologise for talking nonsense. None of that is true. If these people who in Calais are legitimate refugees, why are they not claiming asylum in France, Italy, Spain or Greece? Why do they need to come to the United Kingdom? Um, as I'm sure you'll be aware, because I think the previous witness did say this, the vast majority of people who seek asylum worldwide, firstly, 86% of refugees and displaced people worldwide remain in the country neighbouring the one they have fled. So 86% of people remain in developing countries. Um, France received three times as many asylum applications as we did last year. Most people stop as soon as they feel safe. But the people who are making their way to the England and who specifically wish to come to the UK do so because they have ties to this country because they either have served with our military, as in the case of people from Afghanistan, or have family members, as with the Syrian client that I mentioned um, that JCWI is representing, or speak the language because of our colonial history and have other um, ties of kinship um, and history here. So there are people who have legitimate ties to the UK, and there is no good reason why they should particularly have their claims assessed in France if they do not wish to. It doesn't really work for us to say to the French that given that we're geographically located slightly to the west of you, none of these refugees are our responsibility and they're all on you because France can say the same thing and then Italy can say the same thing and then the entire international refugee protection system will crumble.